بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to another episode of Out of Focus. Last week in our beauty episode, we talked about that there is nothing wrong trying to be presentable or beautifying, beautifying oneself at occasion or for certain people. But the pressure of the society, which is obsessed with how one should look, has led most women to be dissatisfied with what they are born with or what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created them with. Cosmetic surgery may not be the norm in our communities, but often a lot of women resort to altering elements about themselves, which are kada, which means that they are out of their hand or out of their control. Today, our guest is an interesting guest, Sister Zara Rahman. She is an, uh, a head teacher in an Islamic school. Also, Sister Zara has an um, experience in Asian beauty industry. Assalamu alaikum, sister. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam wa Alhamdulillah. Sister Zara, you have had first-hand experience in Asian beauty industry. Tell us a <coughs> little bit about your experience or what are the motivation of looking beautiful? Um, I mean, going back at that time, you know, it wasn't just experience that we built being part of that fashion industry. It's really how you've grown up and the ideas that society has given you right. and for myself obviously I was one of those who was aspiring towards um, the beauty and the fashion industry and therefore went into um, that form of industry where you are representing fashion mm -hmm. um, to the society but in effect while you're there and you have reached that height you don't feel that sense of satisfaction and you start to realize um, it's a disease that you you, you need to overcome yeah. um, and you're in a vicious cycle okay so how long you were in that kind of industry for for a long time i think i lasted there around three years you do have to understand okay. the beauty industry i mean for an average model who comes on it's not very long. Mm. You're always made to feel insecure because someone yeah. else yes. could take your place. So yeah. you're under constant pe pressure mm. to make sure that you're the size zero, yeah. um, that you're looking the part, yeah. that you also are fitting in yeah. with, the, with what values they have given, you know, the beauty myth. I mean, and, 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 and it is actually a beauty myth because once you have reached that, there's a lot of airbrushing that goes on as well because right. you, you never represent the ideal beauty image when it gets onto the magazine or catwalk because you have that element of makeup and everything and you know nowadays makeup you can see mm -hmm. you know one person with and one person without they can look completely different after all the contouring and foundation that's applied mm -hmm. Um, mm. So, and women sometimes we are not happy with the color of our skin, color of our eyes, color of our hair, or it could be the shape of our nose, shape of our lips or eyebrows. We are made to feel that we shouldn't be happy with what we have, and this is like an obsession. It has become an obsession that we are not happy with the things, and the and the and the things. For example, when a a girl, a child is born, especially a girl born in a family who is fair, it's a sigh of relief, as if the, you know, the standard of beauty has been achieved, sort of like she is fair, so she, <coughs> she has greater <coughs> prospect in marriage or job prospect. Um, so it's always, there is a pressure, isn't it, like how you should look and the definition of beauty to sort of like fall into that definition of beauty. Yeah, because obviously this, the, the definition of what measures um, beauty is given by society and if you're following the values that society give you will apply it within your family regardless of what culture you come from mm -hmm. be it Bengali culture any Asian subcontinent or African or anyone there's a lot of bleaching going on I yeah. mean that's that's not just something that's new you mm -hmm. know that happens in most um, African native um, countries where they do you know do a lot of bleaching treatment mm -hmm. to a lot of Asian families I mean you have the classic fair and lovely cream which you know 
uh, I'm sure a lot of Bengalis have grown up with where you think you're going to become fair yeah. you know fair is lovely yes. and, you know, and, and what happens when you're not the fair child yeah. you know you're made to feel you know quite subordinate and good enough, you feel you're not yeah. good enough and that maybe is there going to be a man that yeah. you know you know are you going to have a proposal and yeah. but that's something that shouldn't happen really yeah. because you you should follow the values that yeah. Islam yeah. has given and you're quite imprisoned by yeah. that you know that you're, you're absolutely right and even in the weddings even in the marriage, for example, we look for, certain people look for um, how fair sh the bride is. You know, mm. my daughter-in-law or my, um, uh, the new person, is. how fair she is. And how sharp her nose is. Yes. We all know. And even when we go to, once I went to this wedding, my friend's wedding, and uh, I didn't know that many people in the wedding. And I saw the bride and I just couldn't recognize that was my friend because the amount of foundation put on her face, she looked completely yeah. different. And yeah. I thought it was like somebody else. And then I saw, s I actually asked somebody um, what was the name of the bride because I was <laughs> totally sure. Of course, they duplicated her. And that's it's just that's totally a different person. That's what makeup does. You aspire to become the other person. Yeah. And the other person is a mythical creature which yeah. you may not, it, it's unobtainable. Yeah. You know, yeah. the fashion industry, the beauty myth is unobtainable. The yeah. yardstick that they, they, you have to take to measure to reach there, may not, you may not ever get there. Yeah. And, and you would do your best to use artificial products that yeah. are out there yeah. that, you know, are, you know, the capitalist consumerism society projects on the normal people yeah. so that you can purchase them so that you can apply and become that you know, ideal yeah. formula you that feed they into want that. you to. Yes, and you feed into that because you see, you know, you go out, you walk out, you see a billboards, magazine, adverts, you know, no matter how, you know, traditional, you know, you think your family is mm. and you're not, then you're, you're not involved, you know, everybody feels that, yeah. you know, and we, there was a program that I watched that was a, involved a child and it always had two dolls, you know, which one is the good doll, you mm. know, and the child would point out, the white doll, which one is the bad doll, and the black doll, and can you see, mm. this is a child, mm. and it, it comes from those subconscious, you know, messages that's constantly out there in adverts, even the models, you know, now that, now that, because of the Equality Act, you mm. know, you can see nowadays a lot of, you know, coloured um, models, but then they have to be Caucasian looking, yeah. Yeah. their nose, their features, are changed so much they exactly. look yeah. European. When we were talking about fair is beautiful, I, I read somewhere that it actually roots back to the colonialism period, yes. slavery period, and that was even the, you know, fair, uh, how the skin colour uh, had a hierarchy within the slavery. So, you know, like um, uh, black slave women, when they were abused by their white masters, and they would produce black slave, uh, black, um, mixed you know, race mixed race children. children. And those children would get a job in the house compared to the black slaves who would because get a job in the... Because they moved up in their rank Absolutely. according to them because yes. they're mixed race. They've got yeah. some white um, genes in them and yeah. therefore they're you higher ranking. You look a little bit fairer yeah. Yeah. and that skin colour, because of that you have a better chance in your uh, life. Yeah. And that has... And this psyche, I think we still carry on. Of we course carry. we carry on. It's there and it's very apparent in many homes even now yeah. you know you know fair is lovely yeah you know yeah. you know you have families where they will classify mm -hmm. certain members and family day and night mm -hmm. and that's quite racist mm -hmm. and you it's know it's an offensive way of categorizing yeah but they people. laugh it off it's a banter mm -hmm. it's fine it's mm -hmm. acceptable it's mm -hmm. it's it's done in a way that you know they don't even know that they're carrying those um, colonial racist mm -hmm. remarks um, mm -hmm. Uh, and it's quite sad because it has a major impact on young girls growing up, not just young girls. I'm sure um, the, you know, the brothers also feel it and the young men do feel mm -hmm. it, but the impact it has with young girls is they're vulnerable anyway. Mm -hmm. you know, women are very emotional creatures. Mm -hmm. They're very sensitive. And if you're going to be you know, putting remarks or if society has a certain pressure of an idealistic um, yardstick that they need to reach to, they will try to do what they can to aspire to some of that. And yes. can you imagine coming from um, a family where you are, you know, alhamdulillah, the, it's a practicing family, yeah. and then you have this image and value from society where you are blasted with, you know, certain images yes. of looks, yeah. which means beauty. Yeah. You're going to do what you can with yeah. what you have. Yes. 
you know, so, you know, to make sure that, you know, you look beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, so and you mentioned a little bit about the, um, how the young women feel emotionally, um, uh, you know, pressurized through how, should, how they should look like. And there is a physical aspect as well. Of course there's physical aspects. I mean, I remember <coughs> during my time in that industry, I probably weighed myself 50 times a day. <laughs> you know, so much so, I used to go and check my BMI and boots. Mm -hmm. You know, you check your body mass index. You psych it psychologically ruins your, your mind. It, it's oppressive. You know, they, they, they say it's freedom. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the freedom. You're here. You're in the heights of glamour. You know, you're, you're, you're in the fashion industry. Mm -hmm. You're doing catwalks. You're in magazines. But you're so unhappy mm -hmm. because the pressure that you have, you can't eat. You can never eat properly. You know, you, your de demands of looking good, you know, at all times, from your nails to your toes to everything to the adornments you wear, it's that pressure. But you're always doing it for someone else, so you're never happy, mm. you know, and, and, and it's like living within a cage. Yeah. And it's that experience of being there when you think, yeah, you've got there, but then what? Yeah. And, and then you think, well, this is not what I thought it was. Yeah. Because the reality is those glamorous people, you know, behind those, you know, adverts and magazine are quite unhappy people. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it, it makes common sense when you look at every one of us human beings, whether we're um, animal or human, you know, male or female, we all want to attain that goal of happiness, yeah. tranquility, yes. sakina. Yeah. Though we have the same goal, we may aim to reach it in our own ways and you can see society as human beings we're made up of different groups mm -hmm. you know um, you know if there's a group in society that believes that you can reach that happiness that tranquility that sakina mm -hmm. through you know recognition so they will go into the arts and fashion industry you know or they may invent something so they can get a nobel prize so they may be recognized or in that fashion industry so they can Being famous. become famous yes. you know you know so when they walk and talk they you know all that people will recognize yes. you know people they think that this group of society feel that you can attain happiness through mm -hmm. that because you're you reach them so that is happiness and and then you see the another group of society who feel that having power and control mm -hmm you know, is happiness. So they may spend their life, you know, climbing the corporate ladder mm -hmm. so they can reach that power control. Because for them, happiness is not beauty. Mm -hmm. You know, it's power and control. And then you see another group in society that you think happiness can be achieved through fulfilling sensual desires. So for them, yeah. it's like, you know, you know, drink, drug and rock and roll, mm -hmm. eat, sleep, you know, all the sensual desires. And mm -hmm. they think that one minute buzz is happiness. And then you feel the other group in society that you think, um, will reach through you know money monetary mm. things so mm. they will you know educate themselves mm. you know get a job so they can get the 2.4 you know house the double fronted house the mm. big car the lovely glamorous clothes the designer bags mm. you know the the expensive mac makeups and you know belong in society mm. so they feel that money will help them reach the ultimate happiness right. you know so you though you can see each one of those elite group have you know happiness mm -hmm. as the goal the way they get there is different. And sadly, most of us in society belong to the last group, which feel happiness is a bit of, Everything. you know, fulfilling yeah. so sensual desires, mm -hmm. you know, fame and recognition, power and control, a bit of, you know, having money, yeah. you know, but the reality is, you know, if you were you to... You want it all, but... You want it all, but yeah. you can't. But the reality is, if you were to ask a human being, what is a human being made of, you know, like literally? It's made of jasad and ruh, body and soul. Mm -hmm. No matter how much you feed mm -hmm. your body, your soul will never be content. Mm -hmm. And now you don't need Quran and Sunnah for that, OK? Mm -hmm. A practical Which example. Is, yeah. As a human if you being were to as give, well, yeah. yeah. As a human, if you were to give, say, charity, sure. and nobody knows, yeah. how would your soul feel? You feel happy, isn't it? Yes. If you give charity, mm -hmm. you, you will be in there, and then you think, you feel content. So. It shows that no matter how much you feed your materialistic thing, mm -hmm. your body, yeah, you, you're never happy. Because if you were to go to do, as a journalist, if you were to question those elite, eloquent group of people, you know, the, you know you're on the rich list, mm -hmm. you know, are you there yet? Are you happy? Mm -hmm. They will still say, I'm not there yet. If you were to go to the person who's most famous and you say, mm -hmm. you know, society follows you. Yeah. You walk, you trip, you fall, you're in and out of hospital, you're divorced, your marriages, mm -hmm. society follows you. Mm -hmm. Are you there yet? Are you happy yet? Mm -hmm. And they will say, not yet, not yet. 
You go to the person fulfilling sensual desires, mm -hmm. like Bobby Brown, you know, the alcoholics and all that, that two-minute buzz. You know, <laughs> are you happy yet? He was, you know, they will say, no, not yet, not yet, because, you know, that buzz never lasts. Mm -hmm. You know, and you go to the person who's got power and control, mm -hmm. and, you know, and you say, are you happy yet? You know, Pharaoh had control. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they will say, no, I'm not. I, I'm not. So the reality is, Happiness is not something material. Mm -hmm. It's your connection with Allah. Yeah. And We're going to come to that, but I just wanted to pick up on the point that you said that trying to be somebody, trying to, uh, and this is the, in, you know, you feel the, you feel that it's emptiness inside you and you are never feeling happy. Mm -hmm. And that is created by, um, if I say the industries, they created those products and created that standard yeah. that you should have this, you should look like this. And then, capitalizing on making the insecurity yeah. isn't it capitalizing on the insecurity of the women and also when we conform to this idea of um, what is beauty we see the society is going crazy sharing selfies mm -hmm. and often distorted using the you know the software and distorting their image and putting the best self of course and you, you want to look like you said you know, nowadays people try to have that, if you don't have that symmetrical face, they would try to make them so look as symmetrical as possible. So they will apply the make, so they will choose naturally the best picture that looks good at the eye. And you use that obviously with the yardstick, with the impact of what society has done with you. Mm -hmm. Because it is a disease and unless you get rid of it, you will have to, you're, you're always measuring yourself. Mm -hmm. And obviously nowadays, if you, Everywhere there's selfies of, yeah. you know, I mean, it's become a big, <laughs> you know, <laughs> big thing now. Big thing. Yeah. But I think it's also, it's a test as well, isn't it, being beautiful. So sometimes, you know, how you treat people, how arrogant, if you're arrogant because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with that beauty. And also, sometimes people think if you are beautiful, that means you're up to no good. You have less intelligence because if you are beautiful, then you don't have much of brain or somebody who yeah, is not so like blonde bimbo yeah. <laughs> you know, you know. yeah or someone's too beautiful they might you know we've heard it asian yeah. bimbo you know you think you know yes you've and got also a look but you may not have a brain and if you are not so beautiful conventionally beautiful that means you have feel the pr you feel the pressure from the family um, of that you what should do you have what yeah you so worth? you should study hard you should strive harder because you don't have the face so you better actually work harder to you know climb up the ladder as as well. Um, also, I find that sometimes in our culture, uh, there is a, like if you are dark, there is a glorification of darkness as well. Dark, not darkness, like you know, darker shade. Uh, so kalo bhalo, or you know, if you are darker, I've actually never heard yeah, of that. Yeah, so <laughs> if you are darker, then really? you must be have good heart and all these things. But I think this is the I think same it's more mistake. Yeah, yeah, because if you are saying the fair is beautiful is the same principle you're applying that b based on the skin color you are judging persons good or bad that kind of behavior which is i think same either way same both is wrong. bad yeah you know because, because you have to look at islam in its true beauty it is when it's manifested yeah. and it's manifested when it is used as a tool mm. to make our lives better mm. to make society better our homes better and the world we live in a better place and that's how it should be used as a tool, mm -hmm. so that um, we you, we used our lived ethics into apl an applied body of values, mm -hmm. so that we can, you know, make the world we live in a better place. Otherwise, you know, the reality is, what's happening now is the values that we have and the ethics are only cloistered in mosques or homes, mm -hmm. and not seen reality. You know, so that we can, you know, live in a way that we can embrace mm -hmm. the true religion of Islam, where, you know, your taqwa yes. uh, is what should shine out as yes. the real beauty, you know, yeah. not how, how you look, whether you're, what you said, kalo balo, or, you know, <laughs> or whether you're fair and lovely, you know, re regardless, because on the day of Yawm al it's not whether you're black, white, green, Absolutely. blue, 
able body or disabled body, mm -hmm. you know, or what race you belong to, or your class and your status. It's your taqwa and your consciousness yeah. of and Allah. And I think that's another important point that when you actually get over this thing that, yeah. you know, how you look, then you can do actually productive things. You, of and course. you can be happy and you can move on with your life and I, don't have I, to suffer from insecurities. And I'm a living example. Yeah. I'm actually now living the Pepsi Max. Mm -hmm. I thought <laughs> I had freedom then. Mm -hmm. I am free now. Yes. I would never go back to the oppressive state. Mm -hmm. I was an oppressive regime. It's like being, you know, being in a prison cell. Mm -hmm. you're, it, you're confined by society's norms where you, you're dictated and mm -hmm. you never get happy, you never be pleased and you will never make sure that anybody else is pleased because the, it, it's always moving. Yeah. The yardstick of beauty is moving so much so that, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, People are thinking of now distorting their own self, mm -hmm. you know, changing their, you know, like their eyebrows, plucking mm -hmm. it to so that they can shave it, to shaping their nose, to, mm -hmm. you know. And this constantly is changing. What it was thin eyebrows before is now bushy eyebrows is fashion. Of course. And also it's I think what, what's on the go and yeah. what makes it, you know, fashionable. And the thing is sometimes we, we take something that is out of our control or something that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbade, we still do it because we want to fit in to the uh, definition of beauty and being ungrateful of what Allah has given us. Mm. Um, also, a lot of people don't have even pigmentation mm. and we we mess up with our <laughs> face, isn't it? Mm. Um, another, another thing I wanted to mention is that there is nothing wrong to beautify oneself and to, you know, to take care of them yes, of or course. to stay fit. But we need to know there is a time and place knowing and having this attitude of where and how we can of actually the use time this. and place and it's your intentions as well absolutely I mean, yeah you know <laughs> nobody's saying you, you you know you have to start looking like a tramp and mm. go rough and raggedy you know you're allowed to be smart you know yeah. that you know you should look presentable you know and and you know it the, the, there is a time and place I mean for a, for a sister who's married yes you know beautify yourself to the max mm -hmm. for your husband yeah. but then some or even in women folk as well yeah with your within friends. women folks mm. and your friends you know you can because yeah. n n that's fine but then if you I mean, but then you see very now and then occasion women who do not probably ever wear makeup or dress up yeah. for the for where they are legitimately able to do so and they're going into weddings and all that function where they're parading and even the husband think, wow, you look nice today, but it wasn't for him, yeah. you yeah. know. And I think it's important for us also to understand the Islamic viewpoint on beauty, where does beauty lies. Mm -hmm. And we shouldn't entertain a discussion uh, within in a family or in a friend circle about, you know, um, uh, sort of like uh, s in talking about somebody based on their looks or their um, color or these kind of things because when an even child is listening it has an impact isn't it that this is what you give priority to and uh, again and as parents as well. And then you're another generation exactly. with that same disease yeah. and we, we have to put a stop to it because yeah. you know what is beauty yeah. can be defined in many ways yeah. and everyone has their mm -hmm. own mm -hmm. um, view on what yeah. beauty is. But I think as parents as well it's important for when we are raising our uh, daughters, we tell them, we raise them with the understanding that th this is not what you look outside, it is the taqwa that matters, mm -hmm. it is those standards and ideals that we aspire to. And also when we are raising our sons, that we tell them that it is not what I meets the eye, it is mm -hmm. more than that, isn't it? And, and it has to start from home and then it goes outside. So we all have those responsibilities. And we know, I mean, now Dean tells us as well, when you look for marriage, you know, you can go for power, class, you know, wealth, yeah. Or or beauty, but the yeah. you know uh, we're recommended that yeah. you know you go for someone with taqwa, yeah. you know, yeah. and embracing your differences and then being pleased with what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given us, isn't it? Um, Jazakallah khair, uh, Zara. We are out of time. It's fantastic talking to you. Mm -hmm. um, appearance should be an extension of who we are. It is not that we are trying to be somebody else that the society wants us to be. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum.